Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put on my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to walk through uh, the books of Peter, 1 Peter and 2 Peter. Have you ever read the books of Peter, 1 Peter and 2 Peter? Um, all the scribes of the Bible were uh, listening to the Lord, our wonderful Lord. Uh, as we have mentioned, our Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that, lead, that lives within us is with us at all times always. And all we need to do is call him into our heart and just ask him to guide our footsteps. So the scribes of the Bible were so connected with the Holy Spirit and they wrote what the Lord wanted uh, to be proclaimed into the world. And so Peter is one of those scribes um, and the Lord has a lot to say about that. But before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha, you're the Omega, you're all that exists. Everything that we do, everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory, Lord. I ask that you teach us what it is that you would like us to know today, Lord. Not my words, but your words, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. I ask that you give us all a fresh new revelation of uh, what it is that you would like us to know, how it is that you would like us to live our lives, Lord. Um, and I ask that you heal me and whoever is watching this video, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you again for being here today. Um, I'm really excited about this topic. If you've been following me, um, I you have mentioned many times, you probably have heard me mention many times, go to Peter, go to Peter. When you're in a crisis, when you're suffering, when you're going through some trials and tribulations, go to Peter uh, because Peter understands that. And um, what's so beautiful about Peter, there's so many beautiful things about him, but um, he was the first chosen apostle by our wonderful Lord Jesus. He was a fisherman and he walked with our wonderful Lord Jesus. So he had first um, row seat. He was an eyewitness of all the miracles of, of the Lord's ministry. And also I have goosebumps, which always tells me it's the Holy Spirit speaking. Um, the Lord Jesus asked Peter to take care of his sheep. And so our wonderful Lord Jesus appointed him to be kind of like uh, the bishop, the pope, the one that takes care of his flock while he left this earth. Um, so it's just so beautiful to think about the ways that the Lord worked with him. He kind of, uh, you know, really helped to perfect him. Uh, you know, he wasn't perfect by any means. In fact, he made lots of mistakes. Um, and we all make mistakes. We're all human beings. We all do the best that we can with what we have at the time. And we know when we know better, we do better. Uh, but the Lord really worked to purify Peter and, um, he gave him the keys to the kingdom of heaven, meaning he really just wanted him to look over, uh, his sheep, his flock, those that call themselves Christians and those that he loves so much to help uh, prepare their hearts. So in Peter, in 1 Peter, we're going to walk through, uh, I was trying to think of how to do this, but I'm totally going to leave this up to the Holy Spirit. We're going to walk through the actual Bible verses of 1 Peter and 2 Peter. And what I want you to do right now is I want you to think about anything that you're going through right now, any trials, any tribulations, any crises, um, anything that doesn't feel fair, anything that feels somewhat unjust, it's okay. Clean out that closet, bring it all right here right now. And we're going to walk through these scriptures and I want you to really apply these words to your circumstances because the Lord is working through every single syllable of the words that I will be reading from 1 Peter and 2 Peter. 
And I really want to encourage you to just be open, allow your raw emotions and thoughts to be present, and just allow the beauty, the healing, um, the the you know I, there's just so much to say just that the healing ways that the lord is working through all our circumstances so um let's just go first to uh scripture and let's leave this totally open to the lord so first we're going to start with first peter verse one and it says peter an apostle of jesus christ to god's elect exiles scattered throughout the providences of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. So when we think about the ways that the Lord was working in the apostle lives and the, the those early Christians and all those that witnessed what he was going through. We know that he went to Calvary, uh, that he suffered, that he was crucified, and he took on all our sins. The Lord is asking us to just remember that and to um, just envision that blood, and that blood is sprinkled on us as a way of feeling his connection, his love. He died for our sins because he loves us that much. And he wants us to be purified in our experiences, in our trials, in our tribulations, in our suffering. He wants those circumstances, as we keep our eyes fully and completely on him, to allow that to purify us, to grow our fruit of the Spirit, and to be with him as he prepares our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to follow him. So we'll pick up with uh, verse 3. Again, this is 1 Peter verse 3. Praise be to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that can never perish, never spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all of this, greatly rejoice. So just think about this for a moment. Your circumstances that you're going through right now, there's so much more that's happening and there's so much more that's important than focusing on your circumstances. Allow these circumstances to be there, but gently shift your focus onto the Lord and see these circumstances as just simply an opportunity for him to purify us, to get us ready for him, to follow him on a deeper level. So we'll pick up with verse 6. This is, again, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. In all this you greatly rejoice, Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So again, fix your eyes on our wonderful Lord Jesus. He is our joy. The joy of the Lord is truly our strength. So keep your eyes fixed on him. Moving on to one eleven, trying to find out the time and circumstances of which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. When they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those 
who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. I love this verse so much. It just reminds me of how blessed we are in the ways that the Lord created us in, you know, so fearfully and wonderfully in our mother's wombs. But wow, that we actually are created to be able to experience a whole realm of emotions and a whole bunch of thoughts. And even the angels don't have the capacity to experience suffering. We as mortal human beings absolutely have the capacity to experience suffering. And this suffering, if we can use it properly, we can allow the circumstances of the suffering to absolutely grow the fruit of our spirit, absolutely grow our faith, absolutely help us to draw closer to our wonderful Lord Jesus. So even though you're going through trials and tribulations, and circumstances that you don't feel are just or fair. And even though you may be suffering, the Lord is using all of it to purify us, to help us to draw closer to him, to be with him on a higher level than ever before. So picking up with um, 1 Peter 1, uh, 15, it says, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. There's just so much to say about all of this, but he really wants us to use our wisdom and our discernment. Don't play small. Uh, do what you can. As we've talked about that zero to 10 scale where 10 is the best you've ever felt in your life and zero is the worst. See what you can do to ask the Lord in to raise your number so that you can see things from a higher perspective and that he can help you to use all circumstances to draw closer to him and see things from a higher perspective. Ask him to help you to see things from his perspective, which will help to increase um, feeling his grace, his love, his light, his mercy in your entire being. So picking up with 1 uh, Peter 1, 22, it says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And he's taking that from Isaiah 46, 8. So I really want to encourage you to remember that the Lord has given us a threefold path. The Trinity, again, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, the Holy Spirit that lives within us, the Bible, the living word of God, and his body of Christ. As we can use our wisdom and discernment and test the fruit, test what is true, test what is not true, whatever is not true, put that all at the foot of the cross, whatever is true, welcome that into your heart and ask him to heal every cell of your body, every fiber of your being. Will you join me in that? I sure hope that you do. You know, there's so much more happening in this world than what we can see with our eyes. So allow yourself to take a moment to be in peace and quiet and really allow yourself to feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit. As I read these words, they're not my words, they're the Lord's words. He's speaking through these words to touch every cell of your body, every fiber of your be being. It's healing salve for your soul. As we've talked about, we are a spirit. We have a soul and the soul is comprised of the mind, the will, and the emotions. And we live in a body. We have so much to take care of. But if we invite our wonderful Lord into our heart, we can absolutely feel his presence 
on a deeper level than ever before. Keep your eyes fixed on him and he will make our path straight. Picking up with uh, chapter two, again, this is First Peter chapter two, uh, and this is verse six. For in scripture it says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And this is taken from Isaiah 8, 12. I love how the Bible repeats itself um, for more confirmation. But just remember, if you're experiencing some situations where you're feeling any rejection, any abandonment, or any um, wrongdoings of others, it's okay. Because guess what? The Lord went through all of this before we went through any of our hardships. He is um, amazing and he was such an incredible role model to just think about in your situations, what would Jesus do in your circumstances? He was a beautiful lamb that was crucified and he bore all our sins. He role modeled all of that for us but he did that because he loves us that much. So put all of your situations at the foot of the cross and really invite him into your heart, feeling his grace, mercy, and peace as you go through all of these experiences. I'm going to stop now um, because this video is gonna be rather long, but there's so much information, so much I wanna say, and we'll pick up with part two. Uh, but I just want to thank you so much for being here today. I want to encourage you to dive deep into these verses. Really allow the Lord to uh, just speak to you through all of these words. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. I am a therapist, a clinical pastoral counselor, a nurse, I would love to work with you. My email address is clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. That's clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. I am praying for you every single day, and I ask that you please pray for me too. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.